an alien invasion. Is it biblical? Of course it is. Clearly I'm not here today as a fact witness. You can Google it. I think you just use the Bible, do whatever the hell you like. Just remember, it's not a lie if you believe it. Welcome to Mystery Bible Theater 3000. My name is Caleb Haig. With me, of course, my lovely assistant, Rob Van Hoff. What is up, my brother? How's it going? Hey, man. So it we missed a week. We, we missed a week. Recording this right at the end of the second Adar. Yes. So it's... it's Pass uh, over here we come. First month. Yeah. We're fir- first month, Nissan. Passover on its way. Praise the Lord. Man, I'm so Bring pumped feast. for it. Man, God, it's, it, you know, after you walk with the Lord for long enough, you feel very, like, oh, I'm comfortable, right? Like, oh, good, I, I got a great relationship, things are going good. You know, and you almost get in the idea of, what could I, you know, what else could I learn? And then the then the festivals roll around again, and it's like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, oh man. It's, the litur- it's like our liturgy, right? It's, it's like, like God yep, gave it's us like a, the first a, time a, around a again. Exactly. Yeah. Learn even more this learn even more the 35th time. Okay. Um so as normal, if you want to uh, send us a video, try to keep it under five minutes, see hegatorresource.com, C H E G G at resource.com. Now, when I say keep it under five minutes, you can send us a video that's an hour long. However, you got to give us timestamps. Now I'm still getting people on a weekly basis. There's multiple people each week that are sending us videos that are like an hour, hour and a half long, and saying, hey, you should review this on Mystery Bible Theater 3000. If you notice, we usually review uh, videos that are about 45 seconds to a minute long, and it usually takes us about 20 to 30 minutes to do so. So if we had something that was an hour and a half long, do the math. Um, and so anyway. because we love taking things out of context and spinning them <laughs> so that they mean what we want it to mean. Mm, of course, yes. No, actually, so so the... Uh, the We're also the, a satire show, if anybody... If you like. That is true. That is true. Hey, but, uh, you know, a lot of the time what we're doing is we're taking these uh, YouTube shorts... And we're just playing the YouTube short. Now, I Not just right assume word, exactly. I just assume that if a ministry is putting out a YouTube short, their whole their what they want you to hear is in that YouTube short. And so, yeah. Actually, today we got a really good one. Um, and also, uh, if you'd like to, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel. I know that sounds uh awesome. And it is. You should subscribe. If you're already subscribed, do us a favor. Thumbs up this video. I know it sounds weird, but it does help us. Okay. Um, I think we should just uh, jump right into this. What do you think? Let's do it. Let's kick over to our view here. All right. Here we go. How many churches, Christian churches, were there when Jesus walked on planet Earth? This guy gets it. How many denominations? Let me ask the question that way. There was only one, okay? When people were baptized on the day of Pentecost. Different setting. What church were they baptized into? The Christian church. There was only one Christian church. When believers were baptized in Ephesus, what church were they baptized into? The Christian church. Okay? And it was very clear the church, they they even had their own general conference. You can read about it in Acts chapter 15, where representatives from the world church came together. The church, which still exists to this day, the Eastern Orthodox Church, come discover ancient Christianity, Christianity as it's been preserved for two thousand years. Okay, there's a lot going on in this video. First of all, we have uh, Cloud of Witnesses Radio is the person on top, and he is the one who is um, commenting on the video below. Now, I honestly don't know who the gentleman in the video below is, and I don't know uh, what the YouTube channel is or the the teaching ministry is for him. Um, However, there is a lot going on in this video. First of all, I will say a couple of things, and I'm going to kick it over to you. The notion that there's one church, okay, fair enough. I, I tend to agree with that. However, however, we need to be very clear that within the first century, there were a slew, a good amount of different Jewish sects of Judaism. And the Judaisms of the first century are what turned into the quote unquote church, the ecclesia of God. You had people from the Pharisees. You had people from all different walks of life. Now, I'm not going to say things like that. You had people from the Sadducees. We have no record of the Sadducees converting to uh, to the way. However, it, the, the statement is true. It seems like everyone was part of the way. Did they agree? Absolutely not, right? Absolutely not. You have people who come down from James 
in uh, in Galatians 2. I know I'm conflating the two. But anyway, in, in Galatians 2, you have people come down from Jerusalem. I think they're the people by, you know, James' disciples. They come down, they say, unless you're circumcised and keep the law of Moses, you can't be saved. And this kicks off the quote, on, well, okay, we're going to disagree on this because I think that the timelines of Acts and, and uh, Galatian, I think that they're a little bit different than I think Rob thinks they are. That's fine. But no, nonetheless, at some point, you have, the, you have people go to, uh, go to Jerusalem to figure out whether or not what people are saying is true, right? And, and we read about this in Acts 15. He's right. So he calls it a general conference. Okay, so do, now I've talked a little bit. I'm going to let Rob talk, and then we'll talk about uh, Cloud of Witnesses Radio statement about the Eastern Orthodox Church. Do you want to say anything? Right That's now? true. Well, it, uh, Acts 15 definitely shows that there was a disruption. Right. Of there was a confusion about a particular aspect of the gospel message, particularly the implications for for people from the nations coming to worship the God of Israel. And they went and, and did an orderly meeting. They were, all the people were heard. Peter chimed up and then it got, they were, everyone was silent. Then James gave, basically he cited the Torah or he, he cited the prophets, Amos specifically. And they made, he gave a judgment. He gave a ruling. And then Acts 16 says that they took that dogma, right? They took that uh, letter made it multiple copies of it, and and that all these different communities were edified. We we learned that, as well but, as uh, Timothy's circumcision. We learned that in in Acts sixteen. But at the same time, hang on just a second. You know, I, I let's just for a second let's break down what a denomination is because ultimately, even though, <coughs> excuse me, hang on. Even though I might disagree uh, very vigorously with certain aspects of theology, really what we're talking about is disagreements on theology. Paul had a, a very large disagreement with Mark. Mark leaves uh, Paul and Barnabas, right? And uh, so, what is that? Is that a is that a different denomination, or is it just a, a schism in the church? Then what happens? You well, have we're not really we we don't have a lot of detail about. I what completely that agree with you, yeah. but but then we have Barnabas leave Paul as well. There's much dispute, right? And uh, Barnabas leaves. He does his own thing. Now, I don't know what, what these gentlemen would say. I'm not necessarily saying that this is a different denomination, but clearly there was disagreement enough for them to separate. And, that, and to me, that ultimately is what a lot of different denominations are. Now, when we get into things like Mormonism, when we get into things like Jehovah Witness, and, and these kind of things, when we get into various cults and whatnot, now we're talking about things where it's not just breaking of community because we have disagreements. Now we're talking about heresies, and heresy clearly So how being would this, it. but back to this guy on top is the Eastern, he's, he's saying right. Greek Orthodox. Well, yeah. at what point in history, <laughs> it does the like, Greek why Orthodox is he form? siding with the Greek Orthodox over... Roman Catholic, for example. So uh, now, yeah, this is this is interesting. I think that uh, the Greek Orthodox, I tend to agree with him in the sense that if I was going to choose an early Christian denomination that I thought was going to, uh, that I was going to choose one, Gr Greek Orthodox would probably be it. Now, we'll talk about this in a few seconds. But uh, the reason why is because the, the, the schism between Greek Orthodox and the, and the Catholic Church comes over the dispute, well, technically speaking, over the filioque, but, the, but ultimately over, the, over the, the power of the, the, the Roman bishop, the pope, right? And the, the, the breaking of the two uh, churches come because the Pope in Rome is trying to uh, assert his authority, and he does so with the filioque. Uh, if you don't know what the filioque is, that's fine. It, uh, it just means and the son, and uh, it's um, that the spirit proceeds from the father, which is in the uh, Nicene Creed, right? However, uh, the Roman Catholic Church adds in and the son. And the uh, the Greek Orthodox did not feel that the Pope or the Catholic Church had the ability to do so. Rather, they said that it had to come from a, uh, a council. And so the, the Greek Orthodox believed that the council is what rules the church and not the Pope, whereas the Catholic Church took another uh, belief in this and say, no, 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 the, the, the Pope is the head mouthpiece of God, and therefore uh, he, he can uh, decide on doctrine as well. Now, I would disagree with both of these, 
to an extent. I, I actually don't have a problem with the with the Greek Orthodox saying that uh, there is much counsel and wisdom in, and that a, a council can steer the direction of the quote unquote Catholic. When I say Catholic, I mean universal church. However, at the same time, the biggest problem that I have with Cloud of Witness, Witnesses Radio statement is this. If you have something that is the word of God and a council comes around, and we see this with Luther, the question is, can a council err? And and to right. me, this is the biggest problem. I don't care when the council comes around. I don't care when the church forms or whatever. If you have a piece of literature that is literally written by the finger of God, let's say, for instance, you shall not make any images of anything that is in heaven or on the earth be- below. Okay. Now I understand the icon- iconoclast uh, debates, and I understand where the uh, where the Catholic Church falls, and I understand where the Greek Orthodox fall. However, I see this as a direct opposition to the Word of God, which was written by the finger of God on Mount Sinai. This clearly cannot be true. Now I, I know both are going to say we don't worship these images. Okay. However, the fact that you're praying and giving homage to the saints. <laughs> through these images. That's exactly what idolatry is. Okay. And to me, this is, this clearly shows, now this isn't my, this isn't even my biggest problem with the, with the uh, notion that the Greek, Greek Orthodox church is, is the original church. I'm going to let you talk here in just one second. Here is my biggest beef with the Greek Orthodox church. Anytime a council comes around and says, Hey, you don't have to keep the commands that God has told us. You, what the Greek Orthodox Church, what the Catholic Church has done is they have taken the first half of the Bible, two-thirds of the Bible, and said, this is for Israel, this is not for us, we are under a new covenant. Christ clearly teaches something else, James clearly teaches something else, Peter clearly teaches something else, right? The Apost- Paul clearly teaches something else. Well, and, we, and right, and we have all these historical sources, primary sources, and we can which normalize the large trajectories. We say we can see these trajectories in their historical developmental kind of context, and we can in- expand that to include what's happening among the rabbis. And so we have the advantage today of having such a wider, we still don't have a high def, you know, <laughs> high res uh, 8K image of, of what's going on. But compared to what the reformers had, right? We have we have relatively high res Dead Sea Scrolls. Now we have we understand that there were Jewish sectarian groups that had literally works of the law that were their own additional uh, things. So we can now appreciate the archaeology. I think, in in our view, in my view, I think. God's like, okay, I've given you more to to him much is given, much is required. I've given you more context for the de- underneath those first centuries of yeah. what happened that we, I don't think he designed us to be like the, you know, what do you call it? A ostrich burying our head in the sand. It's like, oh, and that in my experience, and I think probably yours too, Caleb, the more we learn, the more glorious is the canon and the miracle of God's <laughs> um, protection and preservation of the canon of the Holy Scripture. And we can see it, how the works of men, the, the traditions of men have had tried to build up around it. But and it, um, we've had we've had a discussion in the past couple of you know, actually we had one on Mystery Bible Theater 3000 when we looked at the Catholic uh, priest or bishop or I don't know what he was but he was advocating and uh, discussing why Sunday was the was you know why we don't keep the Sabbath. Okay. And now, and then we also on our last show, we talked about a video, even though we didn't show the video, we talked about a video about Doug Wilson, who had also, and once again, not Catholic or Greek Orthodox in any stretch of the imagination, but also was trying to advocate why the, why the Sabbath was changed to Sunday. And I'm going to guess that Cloud of Witnesses Radio is also going to say that because of the councils, we are able to move the Sabbath to Sunday. This right here is, an, is, to me, is the obvious marker that a church in and of itself or a denomination is, is, has not figured it all out. 
The Greek Orthodox Church cannot be the uh, church, the, like the one and only church, because they are still speaking against the, the word of God. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't Greek Orthodox who are saved or anything like that. What I'm saying is, is that you have commands of God that are clear, that say are forever, that are a covenant forever between me and my people. And then you have the Greek Orthodox say, well, this council has the authority to reverse that. I'm sorry. Eh, eh, wrong. This yeah, is, yeah. this shows now I think that that this gentleman is right. I do see a like a a string of people, and and Paul refers to this as the remnant. There is a remnant through in every generation that's got it. They've figured it out. They're keeping the Sabbath. They, and here's the thing: is that you don't it even have to be keep a the tiny Sabbath. Thread you might never yeah. hear of them. You, it, it, I'm not saying that a person has to keep the Sabbath to be saved or any such thing. That's not what I'm saying. That that is not at all what I'm saying. There is a, you know there are there. Are, godly people, I'm sure, in the Greek Orthodox Church. I believe there are Roman Catholics who can be saved. And I know that that's going to be shocking to so many people who watch our material. My point is this. There are people who have true faith in, in the Messiah and know who he is. My sheep hear my voice, right? Okay. Yeah. There are people in, in all different denominations who truly know the Lord and follow him. However, to say that the Greek Orthodox Church or that the Roman Catholic Church or that any other denomination within mainstream Christendom, like the Methodists, the Lutherans, the Baptists, it, I mean, name it, to say that they've got it right, that they are the right denomination, it, I mean, to me negates a huge amount of scripture. And this is why we are seeing another reformation. We're seeing a reformation to the uh, the truth that the all of the law and the covenants, because we are covenant members, apply to this remnant. And people who are our believers are coming to that understanding and saying, oh. and we can af- here's another point on this. I believe that we can affirm this confidently without bashing. Oh, Those yeah. Believers in different ages that were struggling to understand. Like if if I was a Gentile in England, let's say in the second century, you know, I just I don't have the education. I'm coming out of paganism. You know, I don't I can't like read the Hebrew prophets and you know what I mean? And understand I and I just don't have access. I so the miracle of how God spread his word across the world is is amazing. It's it's an amazing miracle, and uh, but I can affirm that there has always been a remnant, and still say, yeah, you know, these people in the second century got it wrong. These people in the third century got it wrong, particularly when when the church was being persecuted. Man, like that's bold stuff. Like people being, you know, that I have. Who am I to even say a word right. against that kind of thing? You know. But, you know, I, we can look at the writings, you know, we look right. at Justin Martyr and Tertullian and, um, you know. Well, here's the, here's the other thing is that I know multiple evangelicals who, uh, and I do mean that seriously. I know multiple evangelicals who have uh, become Greek Orthodox and it takes years. They have converted to Greek Orthodox. And as weird as this sounds, I know I'm going to get some pushback on this. As weird as this sounds, because what's the big the big rift between mainstream evangelicalism and the Greek Orthodox Church? Sola Scriptura. Sola Scriptura is the big, is the big rift. Why? Because the Greek Orthodox Church wants the councils to, to have authority. And they say you can't interpret the scriptures unless you have, unless you, have uh, you know, oral tradition, essentially. It's the same thing that we see within Judaism. Okay. The, I actually understand the the the, uh, the evangelicals who are converting to Greek Orthodoxy, and the reason why is because if you're going to get around the Torah, if you're going to get around the Torah for believers, if you're going to get around the, the notion that, that that believers should be keeping uh, kosher and the Sabbath and all that, you have to do away with them somehow. And no offense to the evangelicals, actually, I really don't care if the evangelicals are offended by this; they don't have a good answer for that. They've tried with dispensationalism. They've tried with covenant theology. It all falls apart. They don't have their, the defense, the, the, the uh, apologetics are weak at best and non-existent in some, in some degrees. And so because of that, what do they have to do? They have to say, well, how do we get rid of, how do we get rid of the Sabbath? How do we get rid of the kosher laws? Well, let's go to the councils. And if you believe that the councils have the ability to change those things, guess what? They have the ability to do other things. Are you going to go after the councils or the Pope? 
So to me, it's a, it's a progression of how do I get rid of the things that, that the church has affirmed for so long or are no longer and still be within the Christian church. And, and, uh, and largely it seems like the blind groping around in the darkness, like, or like, if someone's blind, it doesn't even matter. It's dark. <laughs> it could be daytime, but right. they're groping around and, and, you know, again, I can say that and say, look, it's just a matter of fact, you know, that you, you, the, the Torah is forever, right? You know, yep. your word of the Lord stands forever in the heavens, you know, not one jot or tittle, Jesus says, you know, we, ha- do we take that seriously or not? Um, so, so yeah, nice. what's our, so the guy in the top, uh, the guy in the bottom, amen. The right. guy in the top, wrong spin. Right. That's my but I, final. But I understand the spin within I the... I understand wa- the spin. I understand the spin within the, wa- the wider spin. Christianity. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a video for us, please yeah, go ahead and send us a link to it. It's cheg at torresource.com. C-H-E-G-G at torresource.com. You can also subscribe to this YouTube channel. I know it sounds weird, but that actually does help us. And if you're already subscribed, then go ahead and do us a different favor. Click that like button for this video. That helps us as well. All right. Um, we will be around, uh, hopefully, next Wednesday, 9.30 a.m. on YouTube. Uh, you can catch us there. And, of course, hopefully next week we will be back with another Mystery Bible Theater 3000. Thank you so much to everyone, especially our producers. We are so grateful for you, and we will see you in the next video. Music.